I want to just take just a few moments uh, before we receive our offering today and talk to you about money. Uh, and uh, so it's, it's, uh, it's, you know, it's, it's a painless shot. Just kind of brace and look the other way. No, I, you know, in a real sense, you know, money doesn't exist. Uh, money, money is kind of a collective illusion. If you decide it exists, it exists. If you decide it doesn't exist, it doesn't. If enough of you decide that. That's why you can't spend your Confederate money uh, on uh, eggs and milk. Uh, if you try that, you know, it won't work. <clears throat> so, because uh, there was a time that you could have spent it, now you can't. So, uh, it was, so what is money? I, you know, uh, the dollar and the yen and the uh, euro and all these um, kinds of money are like light switches. They're light switches that control uh, and direct an invisible force. Uh, it's a global force. It's a spiritual force. And so we rightfully call this force currency because it's a current. So if money is a spiritual force, then it's directed toward good and evil means. So the way we direct our money has something to do with our discipleship. So part of our discipleship is learning how to manage our money. Uh, so just take that in for a moment. Now here's lesson number one that the Bible gives us on how to be good disciples of our money. We tithe. This, when, when we mention tithing, it always calls the people of God to rejoice with exceeding great joy. Uh, tithing, tithing, what the tithe means, and this is really clear in, in, in Spanish and other Latin-based language, because we call it the diezmos, which just means the tenth. That's what a tithe is. It's the tenth. And what we learn after lesson number one, after we start doing that, is we learn how to manage the 90% of what is rest to benefit ourselves and our families and the world. Here's a, something that's really interesting. Groups of people that tithe tend to do well financially. Amen. You know, what, one, of the, one, of the reasons, one of the reasons Mormons and Jews are so impoverished is because they give away 10% of their money. <laughs> so you can see it works. It's like that's why Jewish business doesn't do well when they don't work on Saturday too. That's why Chick-fil-A is doing such a terrible job, too. You know, it's shut down on Sundays. So these, these principles just, you know, clearly, uh, you know, they work. And most of the people that do well financially when they tithe, it's not because they look at tithe like a law to obey, but it's a principle to adopt because it produces healthy living. When we become disciples... What that uh, discipleship means is that we voluntarily learn and then adopt the beliefs and practices of our faith to everyday life. And that's a process. It takes us, some of us a lot of time, and we do it in different areas of our life. Some people's prayer life are really good, but they have trouble with their financial lives, and other people are the opposite. And we, we have to keep learning. We're imperfect people. And the reason we adopt these things in our lives is because they're agents of transformation. They change us over time. And tithing and giving causes individuals and communities to flourish. So how are we doing with this? Well, American evangelicals give 2% of their income on the average. And, um, and so uh, that's, that's kind of startling. What's happening here in our church? Well, a lot of people here do tithe and have tithed all their life. Some people... Um, give a little bit, and lots of people don't give anything. Uh, and so, so why is that? I, I have some reasons, and I'm going to tell them to you. Some of the reasons are that some people are new, and they haven't learned the blessings of tithing. And another reason is because some people have, with good reason, become very suspicious about how religious institutions deal with money and ethics and everything else. Our papers, our, our whole lives have been filled with all kinds of sorry 
Christian organizations doing all kind of unethical and bad things with money, right? And we're suspicious. I'm suspicious. That's why this church is transparent in its stuff. And if you want to learn more about it, we're glad to. I, you know, uh, I, I can't. I've been trying to set up a pastoral Bahama fund <laughs> for some years, and the board will not. I've told them, you know, the Lord wants me to have a retreat center where I can really intercede for the church. They don't buy it. They're just, they're so, they've got a spirit of cynicism that I can't cut through. I can't go in and just sign a, a check and say, I think God wants me to have a private helicopter. I've tried that one out too. That doesn't work. I said I had a vision where I was supposed to have a helicopter. That didn't work. I shook. It didn't work. <laughs> this is a suspicious bunch. And so, uh, you know, we have a process that you have to go through and we have an audit and then we have the IRS. We have layers and layers and layers and layers of stuff here to make our books transparent. And one of the reasons we do that is so that you can believe what we say about other things. And uh, so uh, we are trying our best to, to address that. And so a lot of people, a lot of people have reason cynicism. And, and uh, one thing I do want to point out as I kind of bring this to a close and we prepare ourselves to give uh, is that this is a very generous congregation toward those in the congregation who suffer. Time and again, I hear the most incredible stories. One lady came in here one day and she had all kinds of bills. She was in financial peace and she was a single mom and she'd gotten all kinds of bills. And she came in here one day and told me some anonymous person in this church had gone and paid off every one of her bills and she was debt free. I hear people all the time telling me about the just, you know, come here and they were in need and someone gave them money uh, or gave them some kind of gift that, to help them a car or something like that. So you're very generous people. And if I say that there is a particular need, you always give. And I appreciate that. We don't need to stop doing that. But we do, we do have to pay for lights and we do have to pay salaries of the people that serve you through the week. And so there is this ongoing expense. And so um, I just ask you to please uh, remember that in your tithing. This is one thing, and uh, finally, that the Lord says, test me in this and see. He, does, he doesn't say, test me in living moral lives and watch what I'll do, though you, you should do that. He doesn't say this about any other thing. He just says, test me in this about giving and see if I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that you cannot contain. Sometimes we're too fearful. There's, there's a, a lot of folks in this church that suffer financially. You know, the recession that we uh, had a few years ago, they told us it was over, what, two years ago, three years ago? But man, lots of us, have you felt any difference? I mean, to some people, this recession was an irritation. To a lot of people, it was an unbearable thing that just blew up their lives. A lot of people work in two and three jobs. You've lost a lot of things. And so uh, lots of people just don't have too much to give. Let me suggest something. There was uh, a, a lady here that testified one day and just talked about how that uh, that she didn't have any income coming in for time, and sometimes she'd put a nickel on the plate or a dollar, and she would say, Lord, you know, if I had more, I'd give. This is all I've got. Sometimes we depend on, well, the people who haven't been hurt by the recession or they have lots of money. That's not God's plan. In the Old Testament, it says the wealthy should not give more and the poor should not give less. When it talks about the tithe, because, why is this? Because if we all expect to be equal before the Lord, then we have to share equal responsibility and as much as our capacity allows us. Right? All right. So that's it. Uh, Nancy Black told us a few weeks ago how that she... You know, like a lot of us, she gives electronically and has it all set up, uh, um, you know, automatically. And a lot of us do. I do. But she said she remembered her old dad teaching her when she was little, don't ever let the plate pass. You put something in. So, you know, he would always give her some change. And she was watching the plate pass by, and they were having a difficult time. And she said, I, th I started putting up my change. And, and uh 
even though I was giving um, online. And she said, I started noticing two or three uh, weeks later that I started giving these odd amounts come in that I didn't know, and I realized it was connected to this change I was giving. So anyway, current is moving through this building. It's moving all over the world. Some of that current is under your influence, and you have some switches to it called checks and called uh, dollar bills and coins. And the question is, what are you going to do with that switch, and where are you going to direct your currency? Let's direct our currency to the right place. Let's just ask the Lord to help us to make that decision. Pray that our church will always make good and wise decisions with its money and always transparent ones that will stand up before the world as they watch the way that we operate things. And now I'm going to just pray a blessing on this offering. And I, I pray, Lord, that, um, that you would bless the people who've been giving through the years in such very faithful ways. And I pray that you will bless those who are just starting out in this journey and the area of their finances and just beginning to see it as a spiritual, uh, as a spiritual act. I pray you'll bless them. There's many people here today that are really struggling and they don't have any money. And they've, they're upside down in all kind of ways. And they've gone through financial catastrophe. And a talk like this makes them feel really bad. I pray that you would relieve them of all that and lift up their hearts today. And I pray that you would give them an offering of praise that they can lift up. And an offering of encouragement to their brothers and sisters around them. And give them some other gift that they can give to you today. But in all of this, in our, our, and our gifts big and small, we pray you would bless them. And Lord, you would receive them and you would give them back anointed and blessed and overflowing in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.